Our next product demonstration is sponsored by Bottom Line and is presented by Steve Olmshank. At this time, I'd like to welcome our presenter and hand the product demonstration off to Steve. Steve, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Can you hear me okay? You sound great and your screen looks <laughs> great. Wonderful, wonderful. Just like to check before I start saying a few words and nobody can hear me. But I uh, just want to say good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending upon where you are. I hope you're all staying warm. It's a pleasure to be with you virtually here virtually today. Again, my name is Steve Olmshank, and I'm excited to really show you and talk to you today about Bottom Line and Pay Mode X from Bottom Line specifically, really how it can help your accounts payable departments overcome your challenges that really affect AP organizations. Um, challenges in the way of efficiency, visibility, security within the AP invoice to pay process, which in today's environment is really now more than ever extremely important as finance and AP teams adapt to remote work conditions. Many AP departments still use those manual processes that they've done for years, including signing checks and opening mailed invoices. And AP automation, you know, it can seem like a nice to have when all is going smoothly, but uh, obviously given the past year, it's really shed light on how really not having it can impact business continuity. As companies strive for business continuity, they increasingly look to technology, technology in the way of accounts payable automation. In order to support business continuity, you really need to digitize your processes and workflows where offline approvals and reporting, those processes need to be brought online to make accessible to employees. Payment initiation you know, needs to be able to occur from, occur from remote locations. Employees attempting to juggle home, health, career, really wanna position them to be as productive as possible. Electronic payments are a must as check payments printed in offices can really no longer be relied upon. And those processes that, because those processes that were engineered to be secure in office locations, really need to be ver repl replicated virtually, taken into account new security considerations. At, at bottom line, we define end-to-end -end automation as starting with really the invoice uh, capture and receipt process that you see on the left-hand side of the screen here. And that goes all, then it goes really all the way through making that payment, initiating, getting those pay payments out to your vendors. And payments can be done in, um, in a few different types that we'll talk about a little bit later. But from an invoice automation perspective, it's driven by the fact that you have a solution where you can ingest and capture invoices up front because value is diminished if you don't get invoices into a sol your solution quickly. Today, that's all part of what many organizations do manually. So why not have that solution, a solution that can do that automatically for you as much as possible? So within PayModex from bottom line, we provide that mechanism for you to receive invoices in near real time from when a vendor emails those out to get those invoices into processing. From there, you have the ability to drive workflow and PO matching because you know which supplier an invoice is from and you know which location it's for. From a coding process, oftentimes this becomes manual as well. You may be writing coding on an invoice and AP does nothing but rekeying that information into an ERP. So why not have that be online? Or better yet, have coding be automatic when possible. From there, we can drive automated approval routing and even automated approvals where necessary. Documents will um, now be stored online. You don't need to utilize offsite or uh, on-site storage. There's reports such as accruals along with dashboards to help really with process analysis to help you be more productive versus reactive. Everything is governed, so there's a full audit and compliance that can be tracked. And really all of this in a, is really helping in around security to prevent any fraud. So as we take a closer look at the end-to-end -end AP automation, we'll start with the invoice processing and the array of benefits it delivers, and we'll transition over to, we'll look at what that's gonna look like um, on the back half, which is really that payment side of things. So as I switch over to the PayModex solution, what you're looking at here is I'm signed in as really the role of an AP clerk or maybe an admin, somebody who has full 
um, privileges or permissions. Everything you see here is permissions based. And we wanted to make the solution really easy to use um, in order to really drive adoption and really help your organization in understanding your overall invoice process and give you better visibility. So everything here, I mentioned privileges and permissions, but you can also personalize this. So depending upon the date ranges you want to look at, you can change date ranges. Um, you can change different filters. You have the ability to really filter or save different preferences, what sets of information that you want to see here. We offer a, this tile view here, which gives you a little bit of more information with regards to some of the invoices but I can also go to more of a grid view to show more invoices depending upon really what's that process that you're looking for there. And as I hover over some of these invoices here, we get some additional details like such as, do I have a discount period that may be expiring? Can I take advantage of any of that discount information? Just by hovering over this accounts payable now has instant visibility into this without actually having to really dive into that invoice as well. From a visibility perspective, notice I'm on invoice status here. I'm gonna switch over to really outstanding approvals and we're gonna come back here because I wanna talk about visibility. I hear all the time, Steve, how do we get better visibility? When we send invoices for approval, I don't know what I don't know. I lose track of things. Well, within Paymodex, when invoices are out in the field, no longer do you need to rely upon emails may, being generated by your AP team or putting things, scanning or mailing invoices manually, it's all gonna be automated through Paymode X. What we do provide visibility here within these approvals is the ability to see really some firsthand information. Again, you see that information on, for example, a discount period here, but I can see where invoices are. See who are the users that have um, invoices that they need to approve but I see how long they've had those as well. So it offers me some insights into who or where maybe some of the bottlenecks are in the organization. Notice I've got one here for 33 days for $4,600 um, and so on and so forth as you go through these. But we offer different types of approval. You know, we can do parallel approvals, chain approvals, really it's very flexible. But notice I have this invoice for green thumb landscaping. It's telling me there's a parallel approval and I can see that my West One approver has already, my number one has already approved this, but it's still sitting here in approval with another appro approver. So we have some visibility there. We can also see some indications here with this indicates this is a rush invoice. So we have the ability to um, flag certain invoices that need to be approved right away. Um, potentially those may be time sensitive invoices. So users will know they need to take um, action on those. Anything with a green dot indicates that there's some, there has been action taken on a particular invoice. And if we were to view this particular invoice right here, we can actually see comments as well that have been um, added. We can see the workflow, who needs to approve, and we see the history as well. So this one's actually had a bit of history. So everything gets captured in that full audit trail. You have the ability to upload additional documents to be viewed, as well as initiate vendor discussions. So using the vendor portal, we offer a vendor portal where vendors can not only perform purchase order flips, upload invoices, but they have the ability to, you have the ability to, to put in a comment and converse with vendors via the vendor portal. And this allows you to not only capture that all conversations with your vendors and with your suppliers virtually here, um, within the invoice documentation, but that's all captured as well, all right? If we need to send out a reminder directly from any of these invoices, we can easily send out a reminder, and this would be above and beyond any of the um, pre-configured reminders and escalations that PayModex will, all will automatically already send out to your suppliers. If we go over to my to my approvers. If we also wanted to reassign any of these, you can select these invoices and easily reassign. So if somebody is out of the office, it becomes very easy to reassign a particular invoice um, if that is already pre-built into 
the rules within the organization. But right here within outstanding approvals, this gives you the visibility to know exactly where invoices are, who has to approve them, how long they've been outstanding, and really what requires immediate attention from an accounts payable perspective. Now I'm gonna come back to the invoice status here because I wanted to start with visibility there because that's really always one of the first questions, but how did we get there? How did we get to getting that invoice into a workflow status perspective or more specifically, what happens if I have an invoice that doesn't need to be approved because it's matched to a purchase order? What happens to those invoices perhaps? Well, it really starts out in the invoice capture portal for bottom line. So vendors can send invoices directly into bottom line and or you can forward invoices in or have those redirected or you can scan invoices in. When invoices come in, we're, the pay mode X is going to automate the capture, the separation, and really the validation of invoices and supporting documents. We're going to look to automatically separate um, invoices, but perhaps you have an, a vendor who sends multiple invoices or supporting documents with a particular invoice. Notice I've got two invoices in separation. And I'll refer to this sometimes when I'm in this view, I like to call this maybe the, my morning view where I'm in a AP clerk. I come in, I need to see what requires immediate attention to get these invoices into workflow. Well, I've got an invoice that arrived and it's from Landlords R Us. Notice I've got one, two pages on this, plus a statement here. So we actually will capture and we can capture statements or supporting documents here and automatically put this is off because it has this, this paper clip that's already flagged as a supporting document for this invoice. But if this page two if we view this, I know this is page two of this particular invoice, but if this was a new invoice, I can actually begin this right here and just make invoice one and invoice two, or I can make this a trailing page, a supporting document, whatever that might be. This allows you, especially if you're scanning invoices in, you can scan, if you're getting paper invoices, you can scan those invoices um, all together. You don't have to do one by one. You can scan these all within one. So we're just gonna make this, this is invoice one, page one, page two, and here's a supporting document. We can also put something on hold or terminate if we get a duplicate. But now we can just hit continue and we're gonna push that invoice through the capture process. Now that invoice is no longer in separation and it's gonna go through and it's either gonna land in corrections if it needs some additional validations but if it doesn't have, need any additional validations, it'll just flow on through the process. So as we view the invoice, invoices, now I've got three in corrections, and I've actually stopped all the invoices here on purpose for demonstration purposes. But it's important to point out that when invoices arrive from suppliers, there's machine learning involved here when we're capturing data. So if an invoice needs some additional data validations, so if we go to start from the bottom here on my dandy devices invoice really everything we've we've captured here um, has been done through really reading the data on this invoice and it doesn't need anything except for um, validating this purchase order information right here if there was a bit of information that was missing such as say an invoice number and i remove this you're going to be noted you're going to see this in red right here that an invoice number here is required but what's important here is now I can just use the data from the invoice and just click the key. So I don't have to type anything in. And what we're doing here is unlike many other organizations, is we're using, we're not using OCR for digital electronic PDF documents that arrive from suppliers. We're reading the actual metadata that's tied to embedded, the digital data embedded in the PDF document. If you can highlight the text on the PDF, we can read that's on your desktop and that comes into pay mode X we can read that information. It becomes not only very accurate, but it's available here in a matter of minutes here within the solution. And any of these fields, when I highlight, when I select them, it's gonna tell me where we've um, found that information on the invoice. And what's important here is that if a bit, bit of information is not found, once we select where that in information is, subsequent invoices from those suppliers, when they arrive, will the pay mode X capture is learning the formatting of the invoices to know where to look for that information. So this way we don't require templates that have to be changed if a supplier changes their invoicing format. 
for PO back invoices, and I'm going to hit continue there, those invoices are going to be matched now to, to the PO, but we're also going to capture the line items on that, in, on that invoice. Now notice I've got three invoices on match exception status. Um, so we'll go back to this in just a moment. But if I was an AP clerk, I would continue through going through you know, some, of the, some of the data validations right here. Here's our invoice from our landlords are us. Here I just need to specify the supplier and we can also continue to push that invoice through um, through the, the process and, and so on and so forth. And we can continue with these right here. It's really just looking to validate the data. And again, not all invoices will land here. As invoices come in, they may land in an awaiting coding status or approval assignments if we have the coding, but we don't know who it needs to go to. But sticking on the P, I'm gonna come back to the awaiting coding. If we go to match exception right here, remember we captured and validated our invoice from Dandy devices. And we've stopped this here in, um, in a match exception state. And what this is telling us immediately is it's given us some immediate visibility as to why in that there's a goods or services price tolerance. I've got another invoice with a goods or services price tolerance from Murray's, but I've also got one here from Murray's, which um, I'm sorry, down here, it's a price tolerance. So this actually hasn't been received yet. So we haven't actually had the receiving and that invoice is on hold until we get the receiving information um, transferred over to PaymoX from the ERP solution. From here though, when we view, open up the invoice itself, we're going to surface the invoice image again on the right, but we're also going to show you surface the purchase order data here and that I can see my invoice quantity, but I can also see my PO quantity. I can see my invoice price compared to my PO price and right away, noticing in red, we're giving you some visual indications here as to why there's an exception. So now if you're doing, if your AP staff is matching the POs using three pieces of paper, a pen and a highlighter to try to look for lines and make sure they match looking at header information all this is here done done um automated here in pay mode x we can see what our available po balance is obviously an invoice amount of 915 with a subtotal of 880 with this these this one line here flagging our exception based on the specified tolerances that you can set up here's where we have our exception now it's a business decision for the organization what do you want to do with this if we want to accept this price because this is our correct price, we can hit continue and push that into workflow. We could adjust the purchase order to reflect this price. And then that'll actually trigger an automatic match retry when the data comes to pay mode X and this would then be approved. Um, we could terminate this if we're gonna get a new invoice from the supplier because they over invoiced us. Uh, I can also send this off to a re request review. So maybe I want to send this to a PO buyer, for example, with a tolerance issue or somebody else who may want to review this um, and put in comments right here. And we can send that request review out. So it's really, um, again, a business decision how you want to handle this. Um, but right here, we're giving you the instant visibility into that match exception. So you know exactly where the exception is and you can handle accordingly. Now, any invoice that is matched to a purchase order and does not have an exception, those invoices can, you can have those go through approval um, if necessary, if you would like that. But those invoices typically once matched, pay mode X will just, those are then approved and they would then go to an okay to pay file that would be ready to be sent back to your ERP solution to await payment. Now, when we go to invoices now awaiting in an awaiting coding status, that was match exceptions. Awaiting coding is really for your non-PO invoices, the PO and in, the invoices that need to be coded, need to be approved. Um, and we'll show you what that's gonna look like here in the organization. So I've got two invoices for my company, which is Heart Real Estate West. There's three actually out here in this date range. Um, and the other one belongs to another another uh, location here in the company. And that's why I don't see three invoices sitting right here. But if I open up my more utilities invoice, we're gonna see in the invoice information, the captured information. And now from here, I can actually manually put in some coding here if necessary within the um, coding dimensions. I can assign this to another user to do coding. 
Um, but I can also specify a, um, what we call a workflow automation profile. And these workflow automation profiles can be automatic, meaning you can create a profile to automatically code invoices such as Morse in this case, which is a, you know, a utility. And we're gonna always maybe code this the same way. So if I just select um, my, this coding dimension here, this workflow automation profile, when I do this, what's happening now is it's applying this actual coding here. And again, this can be automatic. So these invoices don't even stop at this point and they would automatically go to um, through an approval path which can be a chain, it can be a parallel path, meaning people can take action at the same time. It could be financial based or it can be direct to the person with the highest authority. It's really up to you, it's very flexible. Um, but in this here, I have this specified, it's gonna go through a, a chain. If I wanted to change this, I could make this individual as well. Let's say I wanna send it to my AP manager and we hit continue, we're gonna apply the coding to that invoice and that invoice will now go out um, for approval. And we can keep moving through those. Approval assignments, again, this would be an invoice. I have an invoice, which is a two-way matched invoice for Augusta uh, Office products here. It was matched to a PO, um, but I wanna have somebody actually approve this invoice. And again, you can see how we surface the information from the invoice and the PO, but I can easily assign, does this need to go to a path or to an individual approver? We talked about match exception. I'm gonna finish here with approval in a moment. But what about rejected? Rejected invoices are gonna be those that go out for approval and then a, an, an approver puts a comment on an invoice that says, hey, this we're not paying this or perhaps this might belong to another individual. So if I open up my invoice drawer and I go to my invoice comments, I can see that AP sent this out with some comments, but my West number two approver said, okay, approver one needs to actually take action on this particular invoice. So now that I see that I'm in accounts payable, I don't need to go back and find out why this was rejected, what needs to happen on it. I know exactly what the information, I need. I know, I know where it needs to go because my approver put in comments. And now I can just select my West One approver and we'll send that off to approval. And we won't see one here rejected anymore, um, but those other invoices are going out for, for approval. Once they go out for approval, users can take action on invoices using, um, they'll be able to log into pay mode X and within approval, there's 13 invoices for approval. This user here only has one that requires their action and those can be approved or rejected um, right here via, uh, via the, uh, the port, the pay mode X as well. But what'll happen is a uh, user is gonna receive an, in, an email notification. So the minute a, an approval goes out, users will receive email notifications. And within that notification, they're gonna see the PDF of that, in, of that invoice. They're also going to see the history, the coding, but they can actually approve or reject directly from that, from that email. So they're not required to log in to PayModex to do this. They can actually approve or reject right from the email of the invoice from the body, just select approve or reject, add comments, and then that invoice will either be approved or rejected. So this can save you a lot of time as well when going through and approving invoices. Users can do this on the go um, or whatnot. So that's a quick look at the invoice automation here. I just wanna show you the analytics as well. And then we're gonna go over to talk about payments here before we finish up and, and, and go ahead and take some questions. Um, but within analytics, we do provide an accrual summary. So we can see easily get information on accruals. If we drill into this, this is available on demand um, and it can be exported to Excel or to CSV and you can filter and slice and dice this information um, any which way you, you, you want that there. We also provide some information about invoice process here over the last in this case, 12 months, or you can change the date range here. And that's the same for these other reports as well. But just hovering over some of this information will give you some quick insights into the number of invoices, PO, non-PO, and what that total amount is. And by drilling into this, you can get even further into some of those in invoices there. And then we provide information again on average approval days to really look at where the bottlenecks in the organization, uh, You know, who are the approvers taking a bit longer to approve in this case. Um, myself here, I've got some work to do to maybe get a little bit better, as well as maybe my West to approver, and we can 
surface some of the other information with regards to um, user processing days and average processing days for invoices as well. I'm gonna move back to my home screen here um, for just a moment. We're gonna talk about payments here and I'm gonna come back here to the payments screen here. But what I wanna do is really talk about the integrated payables. If you remember one of my earlier slides, I showed that you know Paymodex talks about on the front end, it's invoice processing, but on the back end, we are an integrated payables uh, network as well. And how does all this work? Well, this visual here, we try to depict within Paymodex um, how it will interface. On the left, you see the icon for the payer. So what happens is once invoices have been fully approved, we pass that data back over to your ERP system um, awaiting payment instructions. So you can obviously be a little bit more strategic on how and when you're gonna pay your invoices. So once you want to initiate a payment run, you send Paymodex a payment file. So it's just, you can send a single payment file for all of the invoices you wanna pay on that day or within that particular file. Then based on the payment type dictated by your organization or based on the vendor's disposition within the network or their preferred method, we'll route those invoices, uh, payments from those invoices to the suppliers. Now you'll see here on the far right, we can process payments really in a number of different ways. We have a virtual card model, which allows you to earn rebates on your spend. We also have an ACH model and we have a traditional check printing model. Uh, where we'll print and mail checks on your behalf to any non-network vendors. Now within the ACH model, we offer not only a basic ACH where the payer is paying the fee to process those payments, but also a premium ACH model. And this is unique to bottom line in which now within ACH, it's similar to a virtual card in that it allows you to earn rebates on your spend. It's a vendor funded model where the vendors also receive some enhanced benefits for accepting a fee. Come back here to the demo and I'll finish up with a couple of slides. But within payments, once you send those that payment file to Paymodex, we'll initiate your payments. Um, and on our home screen here, there's a number of different widgets and you can see now, get some information on your spend within your vendors, different payments that are processed. But if necessary, if you wish, you can also have another layer of approval within pay mode X, meaning you send us this payment file and you have the ability to now also offer approvals within the pay mode X um, network here. And if we look at, open up one of these invoices and we view this, the benefits of having full invoice to pay is now we can see we have all these payments within this particular payment file, but we also get information here, a link directly back to the invoice itself. So we can go back and we can actually view some of the invoice details if necessary within that invoice. We offer multi-factor authentication so we know exactly who needs to approve, um, where they were approving from. So if we were to view these invoices, I'm gonna come back here and we were to maybe select a particular file that we wanna approve, then once we go to approve this, I would receive a text here to my mobile and I would enter in a number, the number I would receive. So it really allows you to really control and have some more um, control over the payment process. Um, and this is optional. You don't have to have them go through approval, but many organizations do like to do that. So in just finishing up here, I just wanna talk about really the example of the power of our, of our solution. We partnered with a company called Taubman, their leading real estate developer that focuses primarily in retail environments. Their challenges were really pretty straightforward, not unlike many organizations um, where they had three full-time employees processing tens of thousands of invoices of payments annually, invoices that were paper-based and, and ultimately because everything was paper and email-based, they had no visibility or understanding of where their spend was. The solution here was PayModex in which we offered the automation of their entire invoice to pay process incorporating invoice receipt and data entry in order to improve efficiency, reduce human error touch points um, in that manual data entry. And we were converting checks to electronic payment methods.
So as a result of all doing all this, now they have an AP staff that can really be focused on those more proactive value added activities. They have more visibility into payments across all their shopping centers. And now they're earning rebates back on all of their electronic payments. Um, and most importantly, they're really dematerializing the invoices that are coming into the organization. So why choose Paymodex? Um, you know, we're a leading we're the leading vendor supplier payment network in the entire world with over 450,000 members in our network. Really allows you to streamline your payments and invoice processes. Some of the largest banks in the world rely on Paymodex to do all of their invoice processing as well. So it's a tried and true application and really allows your organization to have that single vendor solution across the entire invoice to pay process. Thank you, Steve. And with that, we're going to move into the Q&A portion of this product demonstration. If you haven't already asked your question or if you have thought of any additional questions for Steve, go ahead and type your question into the chat box and hit send to submit them to me now. Our first question is from Beth. She wants to know, can you add supporting documents to an invoice after it has been uploaded to your system? Yes, uh, great question, Beth, absolutely. If you recall, there was an invoice drawer area where um, any the approver or accounts payable, they can upload additional documentation after the fact as well. Jeremiah is wondering, so how do invoices get into your system? Um, so one of really two, well, a few different ways. We do also support, I didn't mention this, but in EDI, you can connect if you have EDI vendors. Traditionally, typically, we'll provide you with an email address or a series of email addresses for your suppliers to send e emailed invoices directly into the Paymodex capture portal. Any invoices, if they're, if they're not sent to us, then they're sent to you. You can easily write a redirect rule to redirect those invoices in or forward those. If it's a paper invoice, those invoices that are still coming to accounts payable in your organization, those would then, those are the ones you need to open up, stack, scan those using the multi, you know, function device, and you can then email those in. Sam is wondering, is your system pulling in PO data from an ERP, including the item code setup from the ERP, or a data table for item codes that are maintained within your system? Great question. Yes. So part of the implementation and the setup of Paymode X is um, to really set up the integration methods. One of the integration points is purchase order data so that that information can flow over to Paymode X for matching. We can match to item ID if that's what you're matching on, but we do also we also look at we'll look at the line level information and we'll we go through kind of a, a formula as well to look at what are the different combinations of matching there in order to match the correct line item to that correct invoice line item. Erica writes, is there a situation where payers are prohibited from sending vendors basic ACHs? And I'm wondering if maybe Erica's wondering whether that can be a configuration within your system. Yeah, could, I'm sorry, could you repeat that one again? Mm -hmm. She writes, is there a situation where payers are prohibited from sending vendors basic ACH payments? That, um, I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure on that. I'd have to follow up. I can certainly, um, I don't know if Mark, if it's possible, I can follow up. Absolutely, on we will get you all of these questions. Um, Barbara writes, are foreign ACHs supported or just wires? Today, for with bottom line, we don't have a, a foreign ACH um, model in place for that. Um, we don't support wires either. Those would be handled through really your, your current process for that today. Marilla, this is something we, uh, one more thing, Mark, that we're, mm -hmm. the, that international payment functionality is one that um, you know, I know that is actively being addressed here within bottom line. So um, there may be some updates on that here in the in the future. Marilia writes, what functionality is included in your vendor portal? Good question. So the vendor portal within the vendor portal, vendors have the ability 
um, from an invoice perspective, not only to upload invoices directly into the Paymodex capture portal, they have the ability to perform purchase order flips. Uh, they can comment, obviously have the comments that I, I talked about there as well through vendor discussions, but they also have the ability to see the status on invoices and status on payments as well within the vendor portal. I think we have a related question here from Sushil. He's wondering how new suppliers are handled in your system. So new suppliers, if it's an invoice um, from a, a new supplier, vendor and vendor master data information is another integration point that we would get from your ERP. If that vendor has not yet been set up in the ERP, then we would be able to flag or hold an invoice if it came into PayModex um, because that vendor isn't set up yet in the system, they wouldn't be visible um, to have that trading relationship. Or if it, if it has been set up, then that data would be set up in your vendor master pass over to PayModex. From a payments perspective, we will, we have a, a team that will reach out, our uh, vendor team will reach out to your vendors to um, get them also set up on the network so they can now receive payment, electronic payments from your organization as well. Um, and we work with them to determine what's really the best method of payment for them. Tanya has about 16,000 questions for us. Let's okay. <laughs> she wants to know, what does implementation look like? What's involved? About how long does it take? What if I deploy AP first and payments later or vice versa? All right. Yeah, there's a few things there. Um, implementation timelines can be really anywhere. It's usually six to eight weeks. Um, it really depends where, you know, our implementation team is at the go, ready to go. I think there's always client resources. What does it look like on your end so we can move faster, move slower there? Um, but we really want to make sure, obviously, IT is involved and every any stakeholders involved with um, how we're going to implement and deploy the solution. Um, and Mark, you can, if I miss anything here, let me know from looking at deploying one versus the other, you certainly could, you know, many of our companies who clients, when they look to invoice and then payments will really look to maybe one for, it really depends on what you want to do. We'll have a client in implementation today and they're doing, they're setting up their payments first to get really all those payments going out to, to really make, you know, earn some, some rebates there as well. And they're going to work on the invoicing process second. But I think it really just depends on what are the primary needs within the organization. Another question from Aurelia. She writes, can the system handle invoices in foreign currency? Um, so we do have the ability to read or, or well, let me go back. If it's a, if we're capturing that invoice, um, it's really primarily U.S. based, but we can certainly apply the different currency there, um, and we can look to some conversion techniques. If the language is really a Latin-based language, if it's a foreign on the the capture as well, we can we can we can capture that as well. Um, it's primarily English-based, but there uh, could possibly we could look at take that as uh, um, you know, each case by case. Another attendee writes, how quickly is your supplier network growing? Our supplier network is ever growing. I mean, earlier at the beginning of the year, the vendor network we were at, you know, we we're a little over 400,000, 120, 430,000 members. And, you know, today we're at 450,000 members. So it is ever growing. Thomasina writes, what mobile capabilities do you offer? So from a mobile capabilities perspective, we do have a mobile app for, you know, for payments, for payment approvers to also approve um, via the, a mobile app. The mobile app today doesn't support the invoice functionality um, from an approvals perspective. But as I um, mentioned in the demonstration, from a mobile perspective, we have that ability to approve via email and just um, accepting or rejecting from an email. So if you're receiving emails to a mobile device, you can certainly um, take advantage of approvals there. Sam wants to know whether review of approved invoices for payment can be a required step in your solution. Sure, yeah, absolutely. 
Luther wants to know more about integration with ERPs. What ERPs do you integrate with? So it's a really good question, Luther. We're, um, you know, we're an ERP agnostic solution. So I'd say that as long as your ERP can receive a file, a flat file, or has web, cap you know, API capabilities, um, you know, going both ways, it can ingest, but it can also push out a file, then we can integrate with that ERP. We've integrated with hundreds of ERPs. We have some pre-built um, pre uh, integrations with um, quite a few different ERPs as well. Nicole has a very interesting question. What separates your payment solution versus all the others in the market? So that's a good, another good question, all good questions really, but I would say um, really the, the number one thing that really look that I looked at is that we do have unmatched security and in, in payment fraud mitigation, but we also are trusted by at least seven of the largest banks in the US um, for their payment solutions um, as well. And we've been in business now, bottom line, we've been around as an organization for over 30 years. And there's actually a related question to that from Judith. She's wondering what tools do you offer to help thwart business email compromise attacks? Steve, this has got to be a common question in today's environment. It is, it is, a, it is a common question. Everybody is concerned about security and fraud. And there's a number of different security um, controls with looking at you know, we look to authenticate your vendors. So one of the things that we do is um, from a payments perspective, anytime there is a change in vendor banking information within the vendor portal, which is another thing they can uh, control within the portal as well, um, we actually validate and authenticate that information. So that's one thing you don't have to worry about as an organization, keeping track of vendor bank accounts and keeping track of changes and making sure those changes are are correct. Um, we do some things or are, are valid, I should say. We also do some things in around payment and invoice scoring where we look at, well, where did that invoice come from? What is the amount? Is this a large dollar amount? Are we initiating multiple payments to a supplier? Are we seeing those on, on the same date? So we'll flag those and we'll look to um, display that information back to um, back to the organization to really look to mitigate any of that. But we always have, you know, we always have that team within bottom line that's always looking to um, looking at security and, and keeping on, on top of any of those attempts. Steve, another attendee is wondering whether your payment solution is bank agnostic. Does it require any changes to our existing bank relationships? No, uh, it is bank agnostic. No, we don't require you to make any, any changes. Another attendee is wondering whether suppliers are more open to accepting virtual card payment during the recession. That's a good, really good question. Um, I mean, I think there's some supply, it's hit and miss. I think some suppliers have been a little more receptive and some of that comes to back to security as well. They don't want their bank information out there. They're okay with a virtual card and accepting a, um, you know, a percentage, uh, you know, a fee there essentially for some of the additional benefits they're going to receive from bottom line, but also knowing that um, their payment is really more secure, their banking accounts more secure. And that's Thinking all the time we have. And that's all the time we have for this product demonstration.